Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash joshuarvelas and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Josh Ravellis. I am your host as usual, and obviously, welcome back to the show. Today's episode 217 of the show, and before we get started, we're going to do a bit of a house career quick because, well, you guys know I like to do it around here. It only makes sense that we do it, so let's just get on with the house cleaning. I will just say this right off the bat. I know this episode is coming out a little bit later than what it normally does. Well, thanks, YouTube, for screwing with the video. So, well, not even just the video, but also screwing with the audio. So, <sighs> Now we had to redo this episode, which is not bad, but at least it gives me another try to do it, you know, because you know, got you guys know I like to record this show and just do it one take. But I do thank you guys for coming back and listening to today's episode. It does really mean a lot to me, you guys. Constantly take time in your days to download these episodes, to share these episodes, to constantly keep letting me know how you feel, whether you like my stupid opinions or not, because I always make it clear everything I talk about is my opinion, and I greatly appreciate you guys. You know, give me an audience and you know, just talk and chat. I really appreciate it. I love the conversations that we have on the show, especially because you guys vote on the topics. So, you know, for that, I really appreciate, I'm really appreciative. And I thank you guys for all of the love and support. We're almost close to 3000 total downloads. So thank you guys so much for that. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you to the Patreon backers for supporting the show as well. But it is time we do this episode. Well, again, but let's get on today with today's topic where we're going to be talking about Embracer, Embracer Group, you know, a little developer you know just a tiny little developer formerly known as thq nordic acquiring some of square enix's west basically all of their western ips and western studios for 300 million dollars and i will say this i have seen many different takes i've seen many different opinions regarding the situation i think the general consensus is that for what embracer group is getting for 300 million dollars is an absolute steal i think 300 million in many aspects i okay this is how i view it i personally view the deal as like highway robbery i think 300 million especially for the ips that are in question here so let's talk about them deus ex tomb raider gex thief you know other and like 50 other back catalog ips and along with 1400 developers which obviously since square enix is western uh, offices or development studios were primarily located in Montreal, which as I was being told in a lot of conversations that right now, Montreal and the battle for talent over there is very fierce. The fact that Embracer Group was able to snag 1400 developers, all these great studios that have, you know, made some great games recently, like obviously the Tomb Raider trilogy, the Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, because some of these developers are like Crystal Dynamics, um, uh, square enix in montreal like some of these like other studios that have produced some great content and truly just have produced quality games and the fact that they got away with it for 300 million dollars i'm just like bro not gonna lie this is some highway robbery here <laughs> like i'm just being honest with you guys like 300 million dollars for them i'm like look in my opinion i think it was kind of I think it was kind of cheap. I think 300 million, like I get why, but let's stray away from this a little bit and let's focus on it like another angle. And some of this has been what I've been seeing and just things that I've known and heard about regarding Square Enix is that a lot of stuff has been happening with them, that things just aren't looking so good. Like they seem to be in a weird position where, you know, prime example they make a great game like final seven final fantasy 7 remake and then they produce something like babylon's fall they produce one really good great game or good to great game and then you have a couple just of really really dog games like Balan wonder world you know babylon's fall and it's just 
Square doesn't seem to be in the best of places right now. We're just being objectively honest here. They just don't seem like they're in the best of situations, best of places. And it kind of just seems like they're just trying to sell stuff and trying to clean the books off, make the books look clean for a possible buyout. And this has been talked about multiple times. Like this isn't groundbreaking. This isn't new, but it is starting to become more and more apparent that a buyout is very likely to happen in the situation. And there's nothing wrong. Like I'm saying this right now, there's nothing wrong with a buyout happening. It just seems like based on the situation with Square right now, it's not looking too good. And some people are like, well, Square Enix, like who could buy them out? And people are looking at maybe Microsoft, maybe Sony, maybe another big third party company or independent like firm. Like it could go any different way. However, this is something we have to be mindful about, especially when talking about the situation, because yes, we can talk about Embracer Group buying like these IPs and these studios for $300 million all day we want. The big story is not just that, but the long-term ramifications that the story has. And yes, it does prove that Square seems to be getting desperate. Like it just seems like they're trying to clean out the books to get everything nice and pretty. So when a buyout happens, they look more favorable, more desirable. And whoever buys them out, like I do predict, I'm saying this right now, my prediction is that they will be bought out this year and it will happen before the end of the year. I think it's going to be a, I don't think it's going to be a swerve or just some random person. I think like some people are saying Microsoft could buy them out due to the fact that, you know, it's Microsoft. They have money. They obviously have the capital to buy them in cash. However, I do see them being a little bit more focused on closing the deal with Activision Blizzard and getting that through. So I don't think adding on maybe acquiring like me personally, I don't think acquiring Square is going to help that acquisition at all. I think Sony could probably do it. However, this really just depends on the acquisition and how it's going with Bungie because they did just spend a good amount of money acquiring Bungie for their resources, their IP, you know, not just for their IP, but because of their tools and their insight in the industry when it comes to managing a live service game, since they've shown that they're able to do that. However, one other thing, the, you know, obviously the other big player in this entire situation is Embracer Group and talking about them because they are starting to show that they are going to be a juggernaut, especially in the European space. Like the big, like people are saying, given the current situation with Ubisoft, which we'll talk about them, you know, another time, but given that things just aren't looking so well for them, that they're probably going to get bought out soon as well, that, you know, it's just not working out for them, that Embracer Group could be the next big like juggernaut when it comes to producing games in, in Europe that they're just going to be the next big European developer, that they're just going to be pumping out AAA games left and right, especially with all these acquisitions with all these, like they already have 14,000 incredibly talented and gifted developers. And now you add on all these other ones from Square, they just bought for 300 million. Like, hey bro, at the end of the day, that's talent, talent is talent. And right now there's a huge fight for talent and especially in the game development space. And for me, it's just going to be interesting to see how Embracer Group grows what kind of games they produce you know they they mentioned about some ips that haven't been talked about in a very long time by square enix i'm not going to be surprised if we end up seeing maybe a branch off with some of these ips like expanding them like a tomb raider show tomb raider movie maybe a deus ex show or deus ex movie like these are series or i'd say ips that can i'd say realistically transition well into tv and movies like Obviously, yes, we've had Tomb Raider movies before and, you know, we've seen how they played out. I think maybe as a TV show, it'd do really great. I think Deus Ex as a TV show would do great. And maybe even getting a new trilogy for both of these series, I think would be incredible. I think maybe Gex, I know it's like one of the biggest memes, <laughs> one of the biggest memes in the video game space is Gex. And just maybe seeing that become a video game for once, like actually seeing a fully fledged Gex game come out. And then some of these other games come out like some like I think Kane was another one that was mentioned and just seeing what Embracer Group can do and just seeing what kind of quality, especially with these developers like Crystal Dynamics, like just seeing what they can do, especially like if you give them something that works in their strong suit, like what they actually good at doing, like obviously it's not live service because we know how the Avengers turned out. But then you see how Guardians of the Galaxy turned out and that turned out incredible. That was a far better game than Marvel's avengers by like a county mile it's not even close 
but with this new acquisition of talent it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out if i'm just being honest with you guys and i'm excited to see how this turns out i'm excited to see where this goes i'm excited to see where things you know where things go not only with embracer group with these new ips that they've acquired but also with square enix and selling off their ips and just you know trying to clean off the books and prepare themselves for a buyout and eventually seeing who would buy them out i know a lot of people say sony would make the most logical sense however i get why some people say it has to be a third party due to the fact that they want to keep these ips neutral you know i don't to me i wouldn't be surprised if sony buys them especially because they want to probably keep Final Fantasy VII Remake exclusive on the PlayStation console, besides, you know, obviously putting it on PC and stuff like that. But keeping those, I keeping Final Fantasy a PlayStation exclusive is going to be a big thing. And, you know, if they get bought out by a third party, I'm not going to be surprised if they start, you know, unless Sony makes an agreement with them to keep it on PlayStation for a while, then, you know, that's a different story. But... I think a third party buyout is more likely. I don't see Microsoft or Sony, especially with where they're at right now currently with their deals, like with their current acquisitions, one with Bungie, the other one with Activision Blizzard. To be honest, it's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out, guys. I'm just being honest with you guys. I think we're going to see the rise of the new European juggernaut game studio, which is gonna be Embracer Group as Ubisoft begins the process of falling and just, you know, just really dying off, which kind of sucks to say that, but it, does seem like this is what's going to happen and this is just the new normal going forward but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i know this is a bit of a shorter story and i know that i had to redo it so this story is going to be a little bit shorter but you know given the news there's not really much to talk about you know as, especially as we get more information as time goes on that's what we're really waiting on just more information and just seeing how this goes out like one thing i will say though that is kind of concerning was some of the comments made by Embracer Group that they want to do, like use some of these IPs to go into blockchain, NFTs. And I'm like, oh man, not this crap again. You know, like I get it. I understand why blockchain technology is very interesting. I could see it having some pros in a lot of different industries, which let me know what you guys think. If you eventually want us to do an actual conversation about blockchain and have that kind of in-depth conversation about it, we definitely can. It's just, I would have to schedule some interviews with experts in the field that can actually like, you know, properly talk about the situation and dissect it and not just give an emotionally charged response or commentary on it. Because I'll be honest, I do see the benefits in the technology. However, it's current implementation. I think it's just complete dog shit. If I'm just being honest with you guys. But I feel like if we actually did have a conversation with some, you know, industry insiders, like people that have a better understanding of the technology, I feel like it'd be a great conversation to have. But we'll definitely talk about that. That's just one thing that bothered me that they talked about Embracer Group that, you know, they want to use some of these IPs for NFTs and blockchains. And I'm like, oh, my God, not this stuff again. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below, guys. As always, I greatly appreciate your feedback. I greatly appreciate the comments in the videos. At the end of the day, I can't do this without you guys. Since you guys obviously vote on the topics, but you guys also let me know how you feel about the topics. And, well, you guys keep downloading the show, and I greatly appreciate it and sharing it. So at the end of the day, thank you guys for your love and support. I really appreciate it. For everyone that is going through finals this week, hey, you guys got this. We're almost there, guys. Let's finish strong. Let's get this over with, you know, so then we can go enjoy our summers. And, you know, do internships or go work or, you know, just go relax or do summer classes, whatever it may be. Let's just get this over with and let's, you know, let's just go enjoy our summers. But we just got to do this first. But as always, guys, I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful week and weekend. Don't do anything dumb, guys. Obviously, tomorrow Cinco de Mayo as well. So obviously for me, being a Mexican, it's a very exciting time tomorrow. You know, just don't be too crazy and wild. And then we have a Canelo fight on Saturday. So whew, definitely it's going to be a fun time, isn't it? But I love you guys today. Please have yourselves a wonderful week and weekend, guys. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button, or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I love you guys to death.